everybody. All right, I, I'm so far behind. I have my vacation notebook all done, and here's September. <laughs> I'm just far behind on doing videos because now it's October 18th. Anyway, I did say before I went on vacation that I wanted to show you what I take on vacation and camping trips for doing um, my notebooks. So this is a tote that I get from Michaels that has a tray and it is, let's say, here's 12, I'm just gonna do rough. It's about 15 by 11, 10 inches and probably about six inch, six and a half inches tall or something like that. So I use this for my watercolor as well because it's just fantastic. So it has a tray that lifts out. And in the bottom, I have my traveler's notebooks and I have a couple I picked up on vacation that I really like, one with a John Muir, Muir quote, the mountains are calling and I must go and opt to outside and this is just a blank white, and this is a grid, a dot grid, traveler's notebook, and they cost me $4.50 each. And I don't know how many pages there are, but it's like a B6 size, but I got it on vacation. And then I keep my regular camping journal in here, and then my one where I record the trips. I think this is the one where I record my trips, yep. And then I just have everything in here. I actually have some rocks from vacation that, and a little bit of birch that I was gonna put in there and I didn't. But I have some, just some neutral, kinda um, a neutral color box with inks. And I have some stickers in here. And then I've got, this is all my camping stickers. And when I go on vacation, um, I have this pack is vacation of stickers and ephemera. I have a couple of uh, alpha templates. And then I have this sticker from Tim Holtz or stamps from Tim Holtz. I have some alpha stickers. And then I've got um, a magazine, a breathe magazine down there that I sometimes use for extra. And then in my tray, I have my scissors and my pens. I like to write with my glue that's stuck. <laughs> this is terrible, but thankfully this white glue does come off. This all peels off, just like that. It's because I had to stick it down in there, like weird. I really, um, I don't think I use the glue enough to really make it worth it to even have it. But as you see, you just pull it off. And really, I've lost almost all the glue in it. So I'm just gonna set that aside and I will not put it in here. So usually a Sharpie or two, and then I have mostly Le Pen colors for I like to use for camping. One purple one. <laughs> I like this for doing the edges of my book. It's just a Tim Holtz sprayed burlap. And I just use it with this little dauber right here. And then I just have a few choice stamps. A pine cone and an owl. A trailer. And that's a chickadee on a pine branch and a butterfly. So that's basically all I use. And then over here, I have some washi that I like for camping. Oh, excuse me. I have a little bit of baby powder for if my page, I get sticky on my pages. I have the uh, re adhesive runner and I have glue, a glue stick. And these are just my, some more adhesive runner refills. Over here, I've got a couple things of whiteout, tweezer. I've got some um, little bags in here for specimens, which I'm gonna use one of these. And then I've got some paper clips and stuff like that. This 
is a knife, like here, a little exacto knife type of thing, a hole punch in case I need it, some twine. So let me put those back in here and some double stick tape. Um, so basically, that is really all I use. And it just works perfectly to take with me. I like being able to keep things all in one place like that. So, here we are. I'm gonna show my camping one first, or my vacation one. And a, a friend made this for me. Isn't it beautiful? Just a lovely, and I actually use it um, when I take vacation trips where I'm camping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out because this is the full one and this is the guide. And um, in here I have a little uh, walnut stain thing that uh, little tiny, what do you call it? Nature journal that somebody gave me. So I just keep it in there. And these are some things uh, that I haven't used yet that came in here as well. So I'm just going to stick this back in here and I will save this till my next um, vacation. Let's just go like this so we don't lose any of this. And I'm just gonna keep this till the next camping vacation because we do quite a few of our vacations are camping. So then I'm going to show you this. Uh, and we went up north, we went to the North Shore in Minnesota. Some of you might be familiar with, um, it's the North Shore of Lake Superior. And um, we stayed in Grand Marais. So if you look at the map, here's Duluth. Um, and it doesn't show the whole map, but it just gives you like going the whole way up um, Grand Marais, and then it gives you even further up, and it goes all the way up to the Canadian border. And um, we stayed, I would guess, more or less halfway on the trail, uh, maybe a little further north, actually. So that I'm gonna keep with this. And um, she did all this and I just added um, this Happy Camper thing here. So this is the 2020 vacation to Grand Marais, Minnesota. And we went left on September 25th and got back on October 3rd. And I added some things here, a Grand Marais sticker and some other, other things. This is actually a pocket. Um, and I did want to put, I got these cute rocks on this trip. So um, I wanted to put just a couple of these things in this little bag and just put it in there. Now there was lots of birch, so I've got a little tiny piece of birch bark. And I'm gonna put that in there. And these are little stones from the North Shore. So I'm just gonna put um, some of these in here, just because I like them and they're very reminiscent of what you can find on the North Shore. Um, I think I'll just do those and I'm gonna go put these in my rock basket. <laughs> yes, I have a rock basket. So I think that that's good. So let's just um, kind of keep that as a little something and I'm actually going to put it I think I'm gonna I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put it to keep it secure um, let me see if 
find my other little thing. I've got a little stapler. So I'm going to just do it like this. There. And I like that. Um, i got to keep an eye here in case my husband uh, tags me. <laughs> I am recording and I don't think he realizes that of course okay so that's there and then let's just look through this and um, I found I like I said I have this breathe magazine um, or project calm I guess it's called calm is the magazine and this is the one I use at home and I have another one that had some camping type pictures, outdoor stuff in it that I have in my the camping box. So like I got this here because it talks about nature. And um, let me make sure I am centered well, I am. So Friday we went to Moose, we left, we took the day off and we went as far as Moose Lake, which was only a couple hours from home. So we were able to like, sleep in a little bit, uh, which we never do when we're starting vacation, and pack up what we hadn't finished packing and load up. And then we had parked the trailer overnight at a friend's house, just like a couple miles from our home. So we loaded it up. The, I loaded up the fridge and the freezer, and then visited. we visited with our friends for about a half hour before we took off. So we actually left at 11, and it was... 59 to 74 degrees and we stopped at Holiday on the way out of town for coffee because we had some apple cider donuts that my husband had bought so I got my first pumpkin spice cappuccino um, of the season which we get at our holiday gas station stores then we went to Moose Lake City Campground um, got there at 1 30 and we went just unhooked our trailer and went into town for lunch we went to this little hometown dive called Arts Cafe um, where we just had a baked cod and fries ba fry basket. Um, so then we went back to camp. Uh, there really wasn't a lot to do. We only did a little bit of setup because we knew that we were only going to spend the night. So we didn't, um, we filled our water tank, but what we did is we needed to disinfect and clean it. So we actually did a, with a little bleach and we filled it with water and um, just let that sit in there really good. And then when we left, we um, emptied it and cleaned all that out once we got to Grand Marais and that it was, it was needed. We had picked up some water someplace that was not very smelly water and um, just it was like we couldn't get rid of it so we did this and and it did take care of it so that's that's good so um, anyway what we did that evening then is we just had a, we, we made a campfire and we were actually on Moose Lake but back far enough so we wouldn't get too cold and nobody around us um, but we were close to the bathroom since we weren't using our water we needed to use the water faucet outside and the restrooms since we had all of ours cleaning we didn't want to use it in our trailer so we roasted hot dogs and then we had s'mores and um, relaxed a little by the campfire and then um, went to bed at 8 30 we we were really tired so going to bed at 8 30 was pretty crazy for us but that means we just got up even earlier the next day so here's the things uh, the Hershey bars with s'mores Here's the name, Moose Lake State Park. We oh, we did drive over to Moose Lake State Park to look at the leaves. I forgot about that. Um, here's the campground car pass that was electric and water for $30, and we were near the bathrooms. We could see the lake from our site. Then we went to Grand Marais, and it was 50 to 56 degrees, and this is where we camped for the rest of our vacation. And um, there was very, very dense fog in the morning, and there was fog all day up the North Shore, and sometimes super dense. It just it didn't go away. It was just foggy. 
And anyway, we got up at 4.30 and I, Doug got up at 5 and we just had some quiet time, packed up, and we were on the road at 6.30 after we picked up coffee. And the fog was so, so thick. It was just crazy. We had to go slow sometimes. Um, we stopped in Duluth at about 7.30 in the morning and we went downtown to this um, little cafe called Uncle Louis Cafe and very, very popular and very crowded. And we were fortunate to get a seat right away. You just go in and you, you seat yourself and you just try to find a seat. And we, found, we actually found one. Uh, there was a line the whole time. Really good food. We had an excellent meal there. Uh, we both had the French toast with fruit and bacon and orange juice and um, yeah. So I had a, a picture and then we got to, this was uh, the campground. So um, there's a, like 300 and some sites and we got a site right here. So we could, this was the back and this goes to like Lake Superior was over here. And this was wooded. And then right here is uh, Grand Marais Harbor or Bay or whatever you want to call it. So we could actually uh, step out onto the road here and see the harbor and the lighthouse. And there was a pavilion and a rocky beach and it was close by. So that worked out really good. And then we used um, the bathroom was right here. So we had our car pass. I just stuck that on there. Here I had, they had new camp rules because of COVID. Um, they were way more careful up north than I feel like we are here in the cities um, about putting on uh, hand sanitizer, about wearing your mask, about how many people were in an establishment. So it was really good. And we were there for seven nights when paid a total of $274, which is really, really good. And our site was shady. It was backed up to the woods. So it was really a good campsite and not too close. Because originally I had wanted to be like over here where we would have been right on the water. And that would have been so, so cold. So it's actually better that we were where we where we ended up um, so what we did so we had breakfast and then we headed on to Mon to north so here's the map and this is just part of it Duluth and you go through um, two harbors and Beaver Bay and Silver Bay and then further on up where we were so we, we it was a Saturday of course and we drove along the shore but because the fog was so dense we couldn't see Lake Superior really well um, and we had planned to stop at some parks but because it was actually peak for the fall leaf color it was so busy and people were um, coming up from the cities to see the leaves that we couldn't find parking in any of the parks that we tried to go to to see the waterfalls and the colors. The colors that we could see were just spectacular. So we stopped at Gooseberry Falls and couldn't get in to park and we stopped at Split Rock Lighthouse and it was just way too busy. Um, and we've been to all these places before so that was okay. But we did, we even like um, wanted to stop at some of the scenic overlooks and when you're pulling a trailer, there was just no room because there was so many people. Um, and I pulled things out of this guidebook thing um, and stuck them in here. We I had two, a good copy to keep whole and then another copy. So there was a thing like what to do if it's raining and um, fall color tours you could take, like drives and there was, um, where was my other one that I really like? The Gunflint Trail, Will I See a Moose, um, Eight Great State Parks, just a bunch of things um, that were really good. So we arrived at the Grand Marais Recreation Area, uh, Municipal Campground about 12, and we set up, and then we just had sandwiches for lunch. 
and um, so here's Grand Marais, right, right on the gun flint, the beginning of the Gunflint Trail. We also had stop, drove past Tetaguchi State Park and Cascade River State Park, and again, we couldn't. There was no room for us to stop. So <clears throat> what we did, since we got there fairly early, really, we decided to go driving and driving around and look at the fall colors. So from 1:30 to 4:30, we drove around. Um, just beautiful, so beautiful. The fog had mostly lifted. It was still fog on the lake in parts and on the shore in parts, but not as much. So what we did first, um, and there were lots of pine trees and lots of birch and aspen, which are very similar to, pine, to the birch, and they have yellow leaves. So we saw lots and lots of yellow leaves, beautiful against the dark green of the evergreen trees. And then more closer to towns, you could see the maples with their pretty colors. And the oaks weren't changing yet. Um, so first we drove south to Cutface Creek Wayside Rest alongside Lake Superior. They have a great beach for looking for rocks. Um, but it was very windy, like I said. So, um, yeah, we, we stopped, but we didn't do much that day just because of the wind. Um, we took road four, so then we drove, what did we do? Further south to north of Lutzen and drove County Road 4 on Caribou Trail and Bally Creek Road. We stopped numerous times to take photos. We pulled over at Thomas Lake and the yellows of the trees were just beautiful. And you could, I've never seen this so clearly and so well, but the lake shore, that smaller lake, um, you could see the reflection of the dark green evergreens and the yellow leaves of the birch and aspen reflected perfectly mirrored in the lake. It was beautiful, really beautiful. We did stop at this pin cushion overlook as well and um, enjoyed that. Then back at camp, um, we had hamburgers over charcoal on the outdoor grate and we ate outside but under the awning because it was raining by then. <laughs> so um, we were going to have a campfire, but because of the rain, it rained all evening, so we couldn't have a campfire. So instead we sat in the trailer and had co I had coffee and journaled and read and Doug had hot chocolate and worked on his photos and read. So when we went to bed at 10. On Sunday, temperatures were 48 to 59, and it was Sunday, sunny and windy, and it did cloud over in the afternoon, and there were a few sprinkles, but not enough to deter us. So I got up. We both had so much good sleep. I averaged eight to eight and a half hours a night. Excuse me, and Doug averaged like nine hours a night. We really slept good on this vacation. Um, and we always had our coffee and quiet time in the morning. Uh, Doug would usually sit outside, I'd sit inside, but it was so windy, um, we could actually hear from inside the trailer, the waves um, rolling in on the, on the shore, both in the morning and evening. So then Doug made breakfast, so we had bacon and eggs and hash browns, and we ate outside. We tried to eat outside as much as possible, even though it was cold or windy and sometimes rainy. We still tried to eat outside. So then we decided to go into town in the morning to do a little shopping. So Doug went to the bait shop and I went to uh, the market, which was a cute gift shop, and I got a spiced coffee cup mat. So there's spices in here. And you put your cup on there and the heat releases the scent of the spices. It's probably a good Christmas gift idea. Then um, we went over to Joy and Company, which is where I really, really like wanted to go. That was my main place and I went there twice. But we went, a lot of artists sell the things they make here and we did buy some things here. I bought like jewelry and I bought some decorative stuff and ornament, Christmas ornament. Um, and I did, um, oops. Oh, what else? Um, 
some art supplies as well because they had art supplies as well. So it was, it was a really fun place. Um, and actually I got pine cone earrings. They were made from slices of pine cone and lacquered. So earrings and a necklace. My husband got that for me. Um, just beautiful. Absolutely loved it. All right, so then we decided uh, to, we got back to the trailer and we had, um, I, Doug was doing some trailer maintenance, so I called my mother-in-law and chatted. We did sandwiches for lunch at 1.30 and then we decided to go do some, go out on the road and look for some fishing spots for Doug because the pink salmon were running at this time. Um, they have pink salmon up there and they this is the time of year to try and catch them, but the problem is there's so many of them. They're not hungry. He tried multiple times, and we had done this like four years ago with the same result. Weren't able to catch any. You could pick them up with your hands, but you're not allowed to, so. But he still had fun. We went to the Cadence River, and so while he tried fishing, I looked for rocks on the beach, and then I, because it was so windy and cold, I sat in the vehicle after that and sketched, um, the landscape. Uh, there were a couple of lakes in the Superior National Forest uh, where we drove to and he tried fishing but really no luck. No no fish at all. It's just at least he had fun, right? Um, the book, let me get rid of this. <clears throat> this is the book I used I took along for watercoloring. It's a Strathmore um, book, and I didn't do a lot in it. This was um, a picture I did, a watercolor of the trees and leaves, and then this was a fall print one, and then I took a sketchbook along too. But um, I didn't really do a ton. Uh, 30 minutes, okay, I think we're good. Yeah, so I didn't do a whole lot. Um, let's see. <clears throat> but anyway, it was a nice day for a drive. Then back at camp, uh, we got back close to six o'clock and the meats I had brought, I had put them all in the freezer and taking them out when we got there, and of course they weren't thawed, because uh, we were gonna do something in the Dutch oven, so we ended up just doing tomato soup and toasted cheese sandwiches, and then Doug went geocaching, and I worked on my journal. So then in the evening, in the trailer, because it was still a bit cold, we just had hot apple cider and some apple fritters, and went to bed at 10. On Monday, the temperatures were from 48 to 56, and it was partly sunny in the morning and cloudy in the afternoon. We did pancakes and sausage for breakfast, and Doug and I take turns cooking breakfasts and suppers, so we all we both take a hand in that. So we cleaned up, packed a few things up for our day trip south, because um, we were gonna go back down to Beaver Bay and then work our way back up. So we headed out at 10. First, we stopped at Black Beach near Silver Bay, and they actually, there's two beaches, and the first one didn't have the black sand pebbles, but the, we looked for agates, and we didn't find any. We didn't have any luck with agates this trip either. And um, I did find those cute pebbles, though, that I picked up. And then uh, we looked at the other beach, which did have all the black sand and stuff. Then we went to Beaver Bay to Iona's Beach, and this beach is known as an agate beach, but we couldn't find any, but it was a beautiful place. We also went to, we weren't, weren't able to go Split Rock, but we did get a good view at it from a scenic overlook. And then we stopped in Silver Bay to eat lunch at 1.30 at Northwood's Family Grill, and we both ordered their hot brisket sandwich. <laughs> not knowing that it is a favorite of the restaurant and people love it. And um, so actually, I gotta move this. Um, <clears throat> it's on the bottom is mashed potatoes 
and then there's the brisket and the gravy, and then they put toast on top. It was amazing. Bad for you, I'm sure, but amazing. And then we went to Palisade Head, which is just a beautiful lookout on Shovel Point, and in the back you could see the Sawtooth Mountains back in the distance. Uh, fifth stop was a Taconite Harbor Overlook, which was another beautiful overlook. This is a picture of the Palisade Head. Um, stop number six was Cross River Falls, and that's at a wayside rest, and they're beautiful. Stop number seven was Father, Father Vargas Cross Historical Marker, which was this, and then the lake was beyond that. And then stop number eight was Temperance River State Park. Um, Doug tried to fish for the pink salmon there, where there were t lots of them, but none of them were biting. So we got back to camp at five, and Doug got the charcoal going for supper, and so we did a Southwest chicken and rice in the Dutch oven. And it really worked out um, well. It was delicious. We had it with canned beets, and we ate outside. And then um, after we cleaned up, Doug, we had a campfire going. Doug made... Um, camper pies and then uh, he called his brother in the evening and I journaled. Most of my evenings were journaling and then reading. Uh, Tuesday, September 29th, the temperature was 49 to 52. As you can see, it's getting a little colder. There was a little afternoon sun, otherwise it was cloudy with off and on rain showers throughout the day. So we decided since it was going to be rainy that we were going to go to the Gunflin Trail. So we had breakfast, um, chorizo with eggs and potatoes, and cleaned up and went and picked up some pastries at the IGA. And then we went to the, headed, got on the Gunflin Trail at 10. And we were actually gone for six and a half hours. We didn't get back till 4.30. And the trail is very long. And we did quite a few stops and um, did the whole trail to the very end and came back. Um, and it's a 57 mile tr uh, paved trail. And we were hoping to see moose. That's a, a big, uh, like if you can get by the swamps, it's a good place to see moose, but we didn't. Uh, first we stopped at the Lauren Laurentian Divide Scenic Overlook. It was beautiful with Birch Lake in the distance. Then we stopped at Magnetic Rock Hiking Trail. And this is a mile long rough trail that goes to this big pillar of a rock that's magnetic. So Doug did that and I, I actually napped a little in the car and I hadn't brought anything to do. So I just kind of, I saw a loggerhead shrike and that was about it. Um, the end of the trail was our last stop at the Superior National Forest and we stopped there and had sandwiches for lunch. Then um, we took the Voyagers Highway, and it's just a start, a small section that connects you back onto the Gunflint Trail once you get to the end. Then um, we did draw, go off on the Gunflint Narrows Road because we were hoping to see moose, but no. And then we were back on the Gunflint Trail, and we made a stop at a gift shop that was at the end of the season, so they had a lot of sales. So I got a necklace and earrings and a coffee cup and postcards. And 4.30 we got back to camp. Then at camp, he got the charcoal going again and I made Wild Bill's barbecued ribs, which turned out amazing for our supper. And we had those with some mashed potatoes and that was supper. And I think we had veggies with that too, I'm pretty sure, maybe. And then Doug made camper pies and we, um, for dessert and then we did our usual, spent the evening in the trailer. It was a night of the presidential debate, so we did listen to it on one of our phones, um, but that was it. Wednesday, September 30th, 48 to 58 degrees, partly sunny and breezy, and then cloudy in the afternoon with some rain in the afternoon. So um, the wind was really strong when we went to bed, by the way, too. It was quite a strong wind. Uh, in the morning, we Doug built a campfire, and I made French toast and sausage for breakfast, and then we cleaned up, and uh, Doug went on a hike to Eagle Mountain, and I took a walk to the nearby beach and sat out there and enjoyed my coffee and came back 
to the trailer and Doug was gone from nine until three um, climbing Eagle Mountain and back and he did see a red fox and while he was gone I just stayed in the trailer because it was really cold and windy outside and I painted a couple of fall watercolors I showed you one of those and red and actually I just had toast for my lunch and Doug was able to find some birch bark trunks for me so they were about eight feet tall six feet tall and about this diameter and he got eight of them for me because I want they'll dry out for a year and then we want to use them as decoration in my living room so someday I'll get to do that so he got back, so at 3.15 we drove to the Lutzen area and drove, uh, did a couple fall color tours. So one was Honeymoon Loop and Road 600, Tempest River Road, and Heartbreak Ridge. Um, very pretty still, and we saw a double rainbow. Got back to camp around 6. And then back at camp, well, got another campfire going. Uh, we went and visited our neighbors camping next to us, an older couple, uh, visited them, we looked at each other's trailers, and then we did our supper almost at seven. We had the leftover chicken and rice, and we ate around the campfire, and then Doug made camper pies, and we toasted marshmallows. And then our evening back in the trailer like usual. Thursday, October 1st, 42 to 50 degrees, definitely getting colder. So it was sunny and sometimes it was breezy and there was actually a little sleet in the air, a little snow uh, north of us. Thankfully we didn't see that, but we did have some sprinkles. So um, Doug made breakfast, so we had cornbread and scrambled cheesy eggs. And we did eat inside because it was super cold out there. And um, after cleaning up, we drove into McGranmarie because we figured it was a good day to do some shopping and to get donuts at the World Best Donut Shop, which the entire time we were there, there was lines no matter what for the shop. It's a tiny shop, and the lines were half hour to an hour long. So anyway, we did get, we got two skizzles, which are like a flattened fried donut with cinnamon sugar on top. And we got some other donuts, enough for like two or three days so that we'd have extra and wouldn't have to go back because Doug waited 40, how long did he wait? Nine, an hour and 15 minutes in line. And I waited a little bit with him and then we went to the Ben Franklin store and I got like a t-shirt and an agate jigsaw puzzle and coasters and a Christmas ornaments. We got Christmas ornaments and postcards and stickers. It was a big tourist, tourist spot. And these are amazing, amazing donuts. In fact, I love cake donuts and they have the best cake donuts. Um, Doug got two long johns and a chocolate ice donut and a cinnamon cake donut. And I got powdered cake donuts, a cinnamon cake donut and a coconut top donut. Cake donuts are my favorite. So back at camp, we said goodbye to our neighbors because uh, they were gonna be on their way. And then Doug tried fishing again at Cascade River State Park and I stayed back and worked on my vacation journal. No fish. He got back at 2.30, so we decided to do a late lunch at this little restaurant recommended to us called the Hungry Hippie Tacos. And we ate outside and we had actually fry bread, spicy pork fry bread tacos and Mexican soda and ate outside and thankfully the weather was okay for that. Cold, but okay. Then we decided we'd go to the Gunflint Trail again to look for moose specifically and take side roads to look for moose. Um, like Doug looked up where there were swamps and stuff so we did a whole lot of side roads and we were gone from 3.30 to 6. Um, we saw a grouse and we saw a skunk, but no moose, but it was a good trip anyway. And then back at camp, um, Doug built a campfire, but it was so cold. We only stayed out there like 10 minutes. And um, Doug had a sandwich. I didn't eat. And then later we had our donuts and hot cider in the trailer and um, just journaled and read and stuff. So Friday, October 2nd, it was 34 degrees and it got up. The high was 43. Um, it was a little morning wind, a little sun, but mostly cloudy and very chilly. 
So and we actually slept nine and a half hours. I was amazed. So we had coffee and as usual, I made fried eggs with sausage patties for breakfast and some rolls. And then we cleaned up and decided to play tourists. <laughs> so I went back to Joy and Company and I got a good watercolor block of paper, a tube of paint, I got earrings, a Christmas ornament, and a beautiful birch woodland decorated candle holder. And then we went to Beth's Fudge and Gifts and bought fudge. So I got, you could buy four quarter pound fudges and get a quarter pound free. So I got vanilla praline, dark chocolate, gunflint trail, rocky road, dark chocolate caramel sea salt, and maple walnut. The dark chocolate was excellent. The pr vanilla praline was our favorite. So, and then we also got gifts there. So I got a beautiful Northwoods fleece throw for the living room and a mug and an agate, because we couldn't find any in the fudge. And then I waited for Doug to get done geocaching and he got um, a mug. So then we went back to the camper for a break and um, Doug went to do some more geocaching and then he went to Lake Superior Trading Company and bought a beautiful frosted glass lamp with painted with evergreens and a pair of cardinals, because I love cardinals. And then um, I stayed back and I did some leaf paintings. And um, I framed the one I really liked, but I just picked up leaves from around the place and uh, did some painting, prints and painting with watercolor. So I did that one, and this one, and that, and that, this one. Um, some of these are this one, and then I'm trying to make sure I do this one here. So those were the ones that I did on the trip and one that I framed. So then when Doug got back, we had a sandwich for lunch. Well, he had a sandwich for lunch and we went to Artist Point to take some photos. And then I went to the Lake Superior Trading Post where I got those two B6 inserts, Trowler's Norfolk inserts. And I got some a couple soup mixes and some choke cherry honey, which we actually had today on cornbread. So back at camp, uh, we actually started packing up outside because we were leaving the next day and it was going to rain and we wanted to keep our stuff dry. So we did that. We had leftover ribs for supper. We ate inside because it was so cold. And then um, did a campfire. Hi. Hi, I'm on. I'm recording. So Doug just got back. So then uh, he made the camper pies and then um, we went to bed. A normal time. So Saturday, October 3rd, it was 38 in the morning in Grand Marais and 57 in Bloomington when we got home. So uh, it was a long drive, but we did stop at Thompsonite Beach so Doug could get a couple rocks and we stopped at Gooseberry Falls so we get some pictures. And we got to Two Harbors at 11 and we stopped at this place called Judy's Cafe for brunch. So we ended up waiting in line for a bit, but then we had two really really good late breakfast and took home two pieces of their rhubarb apple pie. And then we went to Agate Bay Beach to look for agates and again, no luck on the agates. And then we took the scenic highway for a little bit and then got to Duluth about 1.30 and then after dropping off the trailer and everything, we got home about 5.30. So that was the end of that. And then here are just some postcards. So no moose, no fish, no agates, but I took pictures of, I got postcards of some of these things. So that is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.